airlines hit hard by air gas shortage. NRI focuses on internet rates and resettlement of West Papuans now uncertain. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thank you for joining me for Tuesday's news. A third level airplane operator in Morbe province has had to halve its operations due to a severe fuel shortage. The fuel, aviation gas or avgas used by North Coast Aviation for its smaller piston engine aircrafts has run out, forcing the airline to ground its planes. Currently, its fuel supplies come from Poland, and with the drop in the Kina value, costs have gone up and business slowed. The airline is now calling on the government to subsidize fuel for rural travel for the planes that use Avgas. The fuel shortage has hit North Coast Aviation hard, with no local supplier for aviation gas or Avgas. Third-level airlines like NCA have to order their fuel stock from Poland. It is a costly part of their business, now complicated even more by the foreign currency crisis and the drop in the Kina value. Fuel charges we've got. Captain Thomas Kandip is the chief pilot of NCA. He said running the airline has become quite difficult in the current climate. And for the last month, um, North Coast Aviation has stopped using FGAS. Basically, FGAS is used for the smaller piston engines, while JEDA is used for turbine-powered engines and uh, bigger aircrafts. And these aircrafts were the backbone of our country. They used to go into places where other aircrafts can't go into. The former MAF pilot is from Komba in the Kabum district of Morobe. His family also depends on NCA as a primary means of transport to and from their mountainous local level government area. People want to get back to the bush because they have relatives, they have uh, what we call last place in the village that they want to have a tie to. We can't continue to provide their service into the bush without FGAS. The fuel shortage may not look like a crisis right now, but just to give you an idea of how bad this is, this is one of two aircrafts that service airstrips from the border of the Morbe and Oro province, the Gulf province, and the Eastern Highlands. Over the past week, Captain Kandip has received more than seven calls calling for medical evacuation, and he can't do much. With two planes grounded, more than half the airline's operations have come to a standstill. There is a backlog of cargo that needs to be transported. The cargo includes food, building materials, and school supplies. This head teacher has been stranded in Leh for over a month. Missing out law government must look look low, heavy blow fuel. Heavy blow fuel now make him fair enough law. Uh, big pla balus now only click balus too because all click click balus and all only way blow me plow move we go low place blow. Benjamin Sipa works for a non-government organization that is helping farmers sell organic coffee from the use LLG direct to the US. At the moment because of the fuel stories. Uh, they can't able to bring them, bring all. Today, the Bulolo MP Sam Basil visited the airline to find out why the number of flights to his electorate had been reduced. There is no F gas suppliers in Papua New Guinea. The Bulolo district recently bought a piston engine aircraft that is now managed by the NCA. It is one of the planes grounded because of the fuel shortage. The airline is now calling for government intervention through a fuel subsidy or a subsidy for the import of aircrafts. Scott Wyde, National MTV News, Lay. The Education Department has announced new dates for the 2016 Grade 12 examinations. Examinations are now scheduled for Monday 17th of October to Wednesday 26th October. In a statement released this afternoon, the Acting Secretary, Dr. Uke Kombra, said the change is because principals of schools have not complied with the standard procedures used to guide students to select subject combinations. The examinations will begin with Advanced Mathematics 1 and General Mathematics. Dr. Kombra says the examinations are to take place on the dates published and not based on the Measurement Services Calendar 2016. He encouraged students to refrain from cheating. He added mobile phones are not allowed in the exam rooms for students and school personnel. 
The water supply to Alotau town is under threat following demands by traditional landowners of Goilanai. Recently, the landowners forcefully shut down a main town water supply pump and called on the Milan Bay provincial government to pay the outstanding 1 million kina. They claim the provincial government is delaying responding to them to stop the due payment. On 2nd October, the Bebesiga family closed a main tap supplying water to half of the residents in Alatau town. Their actions stem from the alleged failure by the Million Bay provincial government for a payment totaling 1 million kina. According to the Bebesiga family, questions were raised over the piece of land where Water PNG Limited built water reserves to save the township. However, the land was gazetted with Lands Minister Benny Allen imposing compulsory acquisition on the land. Minister Allen then presented a payment of 1 million kina in May 2015 for land compensation. However, the Bebesika family is still waiting for that payment. The money is currently parked in a trust account with claims that a second party has the title to the land where the water project is built. The Bebesika family told MTV News they will shut down the old water system if nothing positive happens. They are also calling on the police fraud squad and anti-corruption unit to investigate the matter. Jack Lopave, Jr. National, MTV News. Meanwhile, Water PNG has started water rationing for residents in Alotau town. Residents told MTV News a five-hour rationing schedule is being carried out in parts of the town. With the closure of taps at the Goilanai bore pumps, the town is currently using water from the main reservoir tank from the top town reservoir. Attempts to get a statement from Water PNG representatives in Alotau were unsuccessful. Entity Governor Pois Pakop is worried that plans to resettle West Papuan refugees on government allocated land may be in jeopardy. Speaking to MTV recently, he said with recent road developments into the area, the land has now attracted more interest, effectively putting resettlement plans into question. Governor Pakop said in 2010, Land was allocated here at Red Hills just past the Tassion Police Barracks. It was uh, allocated in 2010 uh, by the um, uh, Department of Lands and also the um, Provincial Affairs who are responsible for managing the refugees. The land that the government has approved for the resettlement of West Papuans living here in Port Moresby lies on either side of this new road. But with the development of this road comes new challenges. It has now become prime land and the government is not the only one interested in developing it for public servant houses. Individuals are now also interested in taking up land in this area. Everybody else are just squattering on the land. Papua New Guineans are just going there and Department of Lands too, they've issued uh, UDLs over a portion of land, so that's creating a, a lot of problem for us. So uh, while uh, Department of Lands and that process is underway, I cannot wait for that process to be completed. So I've advised the you know, West Papuans in, in uh, Rainbow and some in uh, Waigani and those in Ola who have been uh, living in that house at Ola to just move there. Uh, because they, and they can just follow the survey plan that we have surveyed. Uh, otherwise, uh, they will lose that opportunity too. He said as a country, we have a moral and legal responsibility towards West Papuans who live in PNG. On the legal side, we are signatory to the, you know, the refugee convention. Uh, and that uh, gives us a legal responsibility to you know, give them a home and enable them to res restart their life. And we have not been doing well in that regard, apart from taking them into the camps. After the camp, uh, there's not much that we have supported them. And Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. While in regional news, a former Vanuatu Prime Minister has told Radio New Zealand that PNG and Fiji are playing games with the West Papua issue. Barack Sope made this statement following the deferral of the Melanesian Spearhead Group meeting, which was expected to deal with the full membership of the West Papuan Group in the MSG. Sope said the MSG has become ineffective because PNG and Fiji are dodging making decisions and he proposes that the other members vote without them. 
National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. In news just in from Lei, a gang robbed a Papindo store in the center of town about an hour ago. Workers were tied up during the robbery. The gang is understood to have made off with the day's takings. This is one of several armed robberies that has happened in Lei over the, past, over the last three months. Rather, Police are yet to release an official statement. NRI Director Dr. Charles Yala said the government must clearly define its role in the internet service industry. Doc industry. Dr. Yala made this comment during the launch of the full report on high internet rates in the country. Within the ICT sector, the government play roles as wholesaler, retailer and regulator, which creates an atmosphere of uncertainty. It remains critical that the government defines the rules of the game clearly and without ambiguity. There are indeed areas where it has to play a direct role. What is the role of the government? A player, a referee, facilitator, or a bit of each? Providing a clear answer to this set of questions will make the work of the regulators defined and clearer for the businesses to be clear on the investment opportunities the paper found that there are four main categories that contribute to high internet rates, infrastructure, wholesale, regulation, and retail and competition. Under these main categories, there are areas that need tweaking and need serious consultation. The thing I want to point out also is obviously discussed in more detail in the report, is there do appear to be some regulatory gaps. One one gap that we've identified is actually in relation to the wholesale cost. The cost of 1,570 kenar per megabit per second appears to be largely unregulated. Now, in, in Australia and in some other countries, what happens is that the regulator actually sets that wholesale access rate. And it may be worth exploring such a possibility here. The report recommends a two-step policy process to happen in order to improve internet rates in the country. Firstly, as a strategy, three high-level end goals need to guide the development and implementation of reforms that need to happen. These are reducing the wholesale access rate, plugging identified regulatory gaps, and reforming the retail market. This is the final report of a paper that was released by NRI in April this year. The main objective of this report is to encourage discussions and engagements among internet service stakeholders in the country. Hopefully these engagements will lead to an improvement in internet services in PNG. We initially we had the economic regulatory function with IEEC. But in 2009, after the amendments to the previous telecommunication sector, uh, that function has been taken back to NICTA again. So we are only left with the competition uh, aspect of the uh, legislation. So if there is anything that you know, we are willing to take on board any uh, regulatory function applying to this industry, uh, either be setting the retail uh, prices or any other industry, you know, we are more interested in uh, making sure that this industry steps up. I am really particularly concerned with the current uh, internet rates and any other telecommunication rates. Uh, every, having those roles under us previously, I am fully aware of that industry. So now that it has gone back, we're just an observer. The report or discussion paper titled Why Are Internet Rates High in Papua New Guinea was done in partnership with Deloitte and is now available on NRI's website. Sarah Aupong, National MTV News. Also today was the launching of the new website for PNG's National Research Institute. Senior Deputy Director David Ayres said investment in this website is NRI's show of faith in the improvement of internet rates in the country. The new website will host all of the Institute's future papers and they are in the process of bringing in archived materials as well. As part of their work on internet rates in the country, they plan to host a price tracker of internet prices in the country. As an internet service provider, you will be able to go to this website. We'll be using the published prices 
of the service providers. So it's, it's going to be basically the prices that they publish on their websites or through other media, they will be the, pub the prices that we will publish on the price tracker, but it will be a simple place for anybody in Papua New Guinea to log on and say, the cost per megabyte is this much with this provider, the cost per megabyte is that much with that provider, and make a more informed consumer decision. We're hoping by doing that, that again puts further price pressure on the prices to come down. Investigations into the murder of an Asian man in Port Moresby have commenced, but the suspects remain at large. NCD Metropolitan Superintendent Ben Turi told MTV News that police are yet to make arrests. The murder occurred inside a bakery shop at Koki in the early hours of last Tuesday morning. Today marks one week since the murder occurred. According to eyewitnesses, Thugs forcefully climbed through the side window, using window jacks to gain access and entered the shop. This footage taken hours after the murder shows part of the crime scene. Following the murder, NCD and Central Divisional Commander Sylvester Callout had appealed to nearby residents to come forward with information. This is the second time a murder has occurred at the same shop. In 2013, Two Asians were murdered in the same shop and two suspects were arrested in the brutal killing. One was given a death sentence and his accomplice had been given 30 years imprisonment with hard labor. Vasanata Yama, National MTV News. Eastern Highlands Provincial Administrator Solomon Tato has been committed to stand trial at the Goroka National Court. This decision came after the Goroka Committal Court dismissed misappropriation charges against Tato because of lack of evidence. Tato's application to dismiss the committal proceedings were last Tuesday dismissed by Justice Joseph Yagi. Tato was committed after he, he was served with an ex officio indictment. This means Tato will stand trial at the Goroka National court with his three co-accused. Landowners of the Turubu Integrated Agriculture Oil Palm Project are demanding answers for the forced shutdown of the project. Landowners petitioned the East Sipic Provincial Government and National Government to rectify the cancelled SABL portion 144C to ensure the project continues. They have given authorities seven days to answer to their demands. A function from the customary landowners from Turubu and Sauso LLG held a peaceful protest recently to the project site calling on the government to rectify a recent decision why the project should not continue. They believe the 1.2 billion project will help bring the much needed services in road, health and education. The six affected incorporated landowner groups presented a four-page petition and was received by Turubu LLG President David Kausik. With the Supreme Court decision cancelling SABL portion 144C, the landowners believe the 10,000 hectares now belongs to the customary landowners. All operations at the Turbo Satellite Township ceased late last month, causing the landowners to raise this concern. Much of the first phase construction of mills and other infrastructure were completed, and if the operation is halted, the landowners believe their 20% stake in the project will be lost. The landowners have given the East Sipic Provincial Government and National Government less than five days to respond. Jack LaPave, Jr., National MTV News. Paul Pavel from Pomio District in East New Britain Province last Thursday received the Alexander Soros Foundation Award for Environmental and Human Rights Activism. Recognized for his tireless efforts to protect his customary land, Pavel traveled to New York to receive the award. Paul Pavol has been fighting for his customary land after four special agriculture and business leases were issued without the consent of locals as part of a huge land grab across Papua New Guinea that has seen rights to more than 5 million hectares of forest stolen from customary owners. A Malaysian logging company has already logged more than 42 hectares of forests in the Pomio area, including 10,000 hectares of clear felling. However, Pavol continues to fight to protect a further 13,000 hectares from the logging company. 
While many people in Pomio felt powerless to stop logging when they first saw the heavy equipment arrive, Pavol took the lead and became a protest leader, campaigning, setting up roadblocks to prevent movement of logs and circulating petitions to build support against logging. While in New York, Pavol told reporters how he faced abuse, threats and intimidation from the logging company. There have also been several instances of serious physical assault by police officers engaged by the logging company as detailed in investigative reports. Legal cases in other parts of the country have seen six SABA leases declared illegal by the courts and a commission of inquiry recommended in 2013 almost all three leases investigated be revoked. Sadly, however, legal actions by Pavol and his people are stuck in the court system. But for them, the fight for justice is far from over. Lorraine Gabina, National MTV News. A coffee cooperative in a remote station in the Kabwum district has called for more support to get their coffee beans to lay. Nukna Coffee Cooperative has over 400 bags of coffee still at the Yalomat airstrip waiting to be transported to lay. The coffee bags are to be flown out by third level airplanes that are not only expensive but face cuts in flights because of fuel shortages. Bethany Herman reports from Lay. Yalomut farmers have established a cooperative that has already represented farmers in the coffee cupping competition in Lay two months ago, where their coffee was rated amongst the best. What is a coffee from the Ogeda by Gotan Long, Korea? Na, me believe Okaman by Ibla supporting Mibla. Is the backside Long Mibla? Long Kain was a old man, Mary Mibla stab in the Limut area. But constant supply to overseas market is being jeopardized because they have 400 bags still at the station. The Coffee Industry Corporation has already warned farmers that long storage will cause bean quality to drop. In this interview in August, CIC's Rose Romalu said maintaining quality is becoming a concern because of long storage. Our greatest concern, especially for the coffee that are staying too long before processing, because the higher the moisture levels in, in the beans and the more they stay longer in the bags, definitely there'll be some quality issues. The people have also called on the national government for a direct intervention to complete a road from Bit to Yalumet. The road could have solved much of the problems being faced now, but construction stopped when the local level government ran out of funds and when the national government cut back on LLG development funds from 500,000 kina to 100,000 kina. Bethany Hariman, National MTV News, Lay. Mobile phone company B-Mobile Vodafone has introduced a new product with its grassroots customers in mind. The New Day Pass features free calls for 24 hours for as low as 2 kina. B-Mobile Vodafone said the new product is a result of consultations with many of its rural-based customers. B-Mobile Vodafone introduced the new product today, saying the two kina per day subscription empowers users with unlimited free calls to any B-Mobile Vodafone number for 24 hours. It also gives five minutes for calls to any other networks in PNG and five SMS. B-Mobile Vodafone Chief Marketing Officer Parag Pajwani is confident that the company's grassroots customers will appreciate the new Daypass product. That's the new product. We've, we're targeting this product to the, the grassroots population because we believe they like to buy things in small portions. What's critical is once you buy the two Kina Pass, you are connected all through the day. You don't need to spend more money. Empty soul, that's all. Two kina, finish, you're done. And I think that's the, that's the benefit of this plan. He said the low-cost products do not impact on the company's overall profits. Customers can subscribe to the day pass offer by dialing star triple seven hash and selecting the unlimited call plans. Deli Waigeno, National MTV News. 
And now looking at our finance news, the Kina closed unchanged at 0.3155 US dollars in the interbank markets. At Bank South Pacific, Yokina was buying 0.3080 US dollars, 0.3977 Australian dollars, 0.2716 Euro and 30.95 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold and cocoa closed higher, while coffee and copra closed the day lower. Palm oil and crude oil closed lower, while copper closed the day higher. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 54.3 points lower, the ASX is trading at 5.49 points higher, and the Alordinaries is trading at 5.05 points higher. More local and international news after the break, including the Japanese Nobel Peace Prize winner. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. Residents of 8 Mile outside Port Moresby are concerned that they may be victims of eviction exercises carried out in the city. Some residents at the first block have already been evicted. Others are worried that this will have a negative impact on their welfare and that they may lose thousands of kina worth of properties. MTV spoke to long-time residents Apa Siwi and Moses White. <laughs> Now, now, Mr. Vietnam, it's like place in our public income increase. Increase now, people are current planning beginning to now. Place and people are developing business. Now, people are planning more DIY and all kinds of something. I mean, up through. So, all this, like, all this, like, beginning is stopped. Now, all the school beginning in now. Most of them, more public seven to stop in Chetla here. So, all this one, say, more bagolo one up. At least, so, all this, like, line, I'm saying, come on, you talk like him, like that all, governor, now. Share of this country, and we talk like him, like that all. If it means to less department work, work inside deal now, work in bribery now, we can't get any stuff. Please, less department must come out straight and talk out law, all people belong in hurry up. So that people can prevent the stuff. People just lost the stuff. People don't say, one of my bomb blago. One of my bomb blago. All these letters will not talk to all of people. The deputy principal of Balob has revealed that previous elementary teacher training proposed by Balob Teachers College was unsanctioned by the PNG Education Institute. The training that was supposed to begin in June this year in Finchhafen was cancelled even after trainees paid more than 2,000 kina each in fees. New sets of training will be conducted by the PNG Education Institute, Balob Teachers College and Morbe Provincial Education Division. The first year teachers who completed six weeks training at Makam District's Bobong area last year were requested by the Provincial Education Board to take up another training in June this year with a fee of 2,800 kina. More than 200 teachers have paid their fees to Balob Teachers College in order to attend the training at Hellsbeck in Finchafen District. However, Ilari Siamoli, the deputy principal of Balob Teachers College, says the training was cancelled by PNG Education Institute. Because the Papua New Guinea Education Institute, which owns the program, has now nullified the program, meaning that Balob Teachers College uh, will, not, will not continue on with the program. The teachers paid a fee of 1,300 kina last year to the Provincial Elementary Education Division in order to attend the training. According to Sia Moli, Balob Teachers College, who is the host of the program, will not proceed with the training. Due to the um, nullification of the program by the Papua New Guinea Education Institute, then we are not able to continue on with the program because that is the direction that has come from uh, uh, the PNG director to the uh, FAS secretary and F Acting, acting Secretary has also not, uh, informed the principal for their direction. So the principal has directed me as the person delegated the responsibility to oversee this program, now to hold the programs. The College Accounts Department is working to reimburse fees paid by individual teachers. I have directed our accounts to uh, facilitate uh, payments and check with um, the banks with reconciling of the accounts before payments are done to the, um, the students who would be that have paid into the Balop account already. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lei. 
A woman in Leh who makes her living out of sewing is appealing to the national government to support PNG women create a market for them. Samantha Anami, a tailor at a department store in Leh's top town, believes most women have the skills and ability to sew and sell clothes but need financial support. Thirty-one-year-old Samantha Animi from Medang is a single mother to three children. She started sewing in 2006 in Rabaul after realizing the demand for Mary blouses. She used to work as a bank teller before quitting her job and going into sewing as her main source of revenue. Her love for sewing grew after she discovered that she could make three times more than what she usually earned in a fortnight. 250k in a fortnight. In showing, I may come 250k in a day. That made me, um, I had to lose my job. Me must lose the work. Because me think me work, stop me and I make you plenty of money. Me so much, me make it lots of money than like five to six times my fortnight. She is self-taught and learned the trade through perseverance and commitment. Samantha has tried to set up her own tailoring business but failed. She had tried to seek financial assistance from NDB but needs startup capital. I think this government can um, run it some like school or mama, so that start nothing house can come the line lots of up and just give them a sewing machine or something so they can continue from there. Today, she is one of the three tailors working at one of the recently opened department stores in Lay. Every day, they get orders to sew special designs for certain occasions like the Independence Day, graduations, provincial days, and other organized events. All graduation clothes belong all. Hello, graduation. I have a display dress. I have a summer now. I have a special order work to come. Plant it through. Now, I me plan mask at five plowders. All the other blown plow close them up now. Samantha believes there are a lot of women like her who have the skills and desire to do more, but lack financial support and a market to sell their handiwork. Samantha believes PNG women need a little help in terms of exposing their talents and skills to the market instead of importing clothes from overseas they can be employed to sow and sell in a well-established facility. Mata Lewis, National MTV News, Lay. Turning overseas, a Japanese biologist has won the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine. Yoshinori Osumi discovered how cells in the body break down and recycle themselves, something that has paved the way for research on treatment for neurological diseases. The award, announced yesterday by the Nobel Committee in Stockholm, comes with a check for 8 million Swedish krono or 2.9 million kina. Yoshinori Osumi, an honorary professor at the Tokyo Institute of Technology, received his commendation to the sound of applause from university students and faculty members. From there it was on to the press conference where the professor spoke of his work. ま、and his discovery and its implications on the future of biology as a science. To cap off what is being seen as a national honor for Japan, a call from Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. 
がんやパンキーソン病など難病に苦しむ方々に光を与えたと思いますあの日本人として本当に誇りを思います Welcome to Chukai Sports. After much demand, Pacifica TV has granted access to the Australian National Basketball League or NBL. As of this Friday, MTV will be airing NBL every weekend. For basketball followers in the country, NBL matches for this weekend as follows. On Friday, there will be a match between New Zealand Breakers and Melbourne, and on Saturday, Sydney Kings will face the Brisbane Bullets. In football, the PNG men's national football are on a week long training camp in Port Moresby. Head coach Fleming Seretslev has introduced four new players into the team four months out from their next World Cup qualifier. Jeremy Mogi caught up with the team after training this morning. The 29 men squad united in one purpose with the qualifiers for Russia 2018 on the cards. Initial preparations had been for a proposed friendly against Vanuatu. However, negotiations had been unable to bear any positive results, with head coach Fleming Seritsilev now looking to November. Yeah, not uh, in this FIFA window, of course, but I'm 100% sure that in the next, in the November FIFA window, that we will uh, play at least one or hopefully two international uh, matches. Seritsilev also using the opportunity to introduce new possible representatives for the country. But on the other hand, then uh, this uh, camp here has given us the possibility to see players that uh, we have never seen be, uh, before uh, playing together with our normal national team players. And it's a good opportunity for me to, to see the level of those players. For me, I'm a male voice, but uh, I'm uh, second day now with training, but uh, we got a week to work. So maybe I'm going to try and push a bit, I'm going to catch up with the boys. All stop, all stop, man, give been stop, yeah. Whilst travelling after the train session, goalkeeper Ronald Warrison also excited at the prospect of having fellow Lay City dweller teammate Troy Gunemba amongst the new faces in the squad. Uh, yes, uh, I'm a member of Troy. I look at some good person who come up with the performance of them, and I think I'm changing. So I'm coming to the team, and I'm going to the Troy to join the team. I mean, this is camp going to mostly. In camp until next to Kuwadni's day, the squad will be joined by other PNG internationals, namely Captain David Muta and the rest of the members of the national team who are in the Solomon Islands at the moment, as well as strikers Raymond Gunemba and Nigel Dabin Yaba from both Australia and New Zealand. And all those players will be expected here in the nation's capital over the next two days. Jeremy Mogi, National MTV Sports. Work at Bava Park and the PNG Football Stadium is in full steam ahead towards completion. PNG Sports Foundation Executive Director Peter Tsamalili toured the venues with members of the Infrastructure Project Steering Committee as part of their weekly meet. The venues are expected to be completed by the end of this month and teams for the FIFA Under-20 World Cup will begin arriving in the first week of November. Chuka Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Chukai Sports. Welcome back to Chukai Sports. In the NCD volleyball competition, while some teams have already secured a grand final spot from the first preliminary round last Saturday, others are yet to go through their semi final matches. After beating PTPSL 3 to 2 in the men's A grade minor semi final, MJ Electrical Yumi will meet Ella Motos and the winner will take on Jamas in the grand final. In the men's Premier Division, Edatex Scorpions are now set for the 2016 Premier Grand Final after defeating Vanama three sets to one. Meanwhile, Valima beat Jamas and will play Vanama for the last Grand Final place this Saturday. The men's A grade saw Jamas defeating Elamotes 3 2 in the major semi final while Jamas booked the first Grand Final seat. 
And in the women's premier, PTPSL Telecom managed to hold off Ella Motors three sets to two in the major semi-final and is now on standby for the grand final. Vailima eliminated Edatex Scorpions 3-2 in the women's premier sudden death match. While Vailima will meet Ella Motors in the second preliminary final this Saturday. And in the women's A grade, PTPSL Telecom booked the first grand final spot when they defeated MJ Electrical Yumiya 3-1. Vailima eliminated Jamas 3-2 in the women's A grade do or die clash. And this weekend, Vailima will face MJ Electrical Yumiya for the remaining place in the season's decider. The grand final is just two weeks away. Dini Rose Reiko, National MTV Sports. National title belts were presented to four winners at the Muay Thai title fight at the Lamana Hotel in Port Moresby. The first fight was between Anton Ugla and Alex the Ripper Waragop in the 67 kg division. Anton Ugla and Alex Waragop were evenly matched all throughout the five rounds both showing great athleticism during the 15 minutes with massive kicks and punches. In the end, the Ripper managed to score a few more points than Anton, which saw him come out victorious. Followed after was the 60 kg title bout between Sine Otto and Martin Handyman Mike. The Handyman proved too good for his opponent to win the 60 kg national Muay Thai title belt. <laughs> The third fight saw Alphonse the Punisher Kauga take on John Ake in the 70.72 kg division bout. Both going at each other with big blows to the head, thighs and calf. The Punisher seemed to dominate in the first two rounds but Ake was not going down that easily. Ake's determination got him the win in the end. In the last fight, it was a one-sided affair between David Wigman, Lawe, and Thomas Spider-Man Kagili. Spider-Man proved too good for Wigman, knocking him out in the second round. Spider-Man went on to claim the 63.5 kg national title belt. Elijah Lovett, National MTV Sports. And that ends Chukai Sports. The weather details for the next 24 hours when we come back. Chukai Sports. True Kai Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Your weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Thundery showers in Port Moresby and Daru. A shower or two in Kerama. Fine weather in Alotau and brief showers in Popandeta. In the Mumasi region, fine, although cloudy in Leh. Fine weather in Medeng. Brief showers in Wewak and thundery showers in Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, passing showers in Loringau. Fine in Kavieng and Kimbe. Brief showers in Kokopo and Rabao. And thundery showers in Buka. And in the Highlands region, brief showers then morning fog in all centers. Forecast for the most for small ships for the next 24 hours. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait and Daru to Kiwai Island to Kerama to Yule Island to Hood Point to Samurai Island. Seas of 2 to 2.5 meters. Waters of eastern and western Milimbe Islands with waters of Samurai Island to Cape Vogel to Finchhafen and with waters of Finchhafen through Vitia Strait and Siasi Islands to Long Island. Seas of 1.5 to 2 meters. Waters of Medang to Bogia, to Wewak to Aitape, to Vanimo and northern PNG Indonesian border, and with waters of Manus and its western group of islands, seas of 0 0.5 to 1.3 meters. And waters of New Island to New Britain to Bougainville, seas of 0 0.5 to 1.5 meters. Ocean forecast for PNG areas. 
In the Coral Sea, seas moderate to rather rough southeast winds at 15 to 25 knots. In the Solomon Sea, seas moderate with southeast winds at 15 to 20 knots. In the Bismarck Sea, sea slight with southeast to southwest winds at 10 to 15 knots with gusts. And in the Pacific Ocean, sea slight with southeast to southwest, southwest winds at 10 to 15 knots. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. Now recapping our main stories for tonight. Rural airlines hit hard by Avgas shortage. NRI focuses on internet rates and resettlement of West Papuans now uncertain. And that's the news, sports and weather for tonight. On behalf of the entire news team, I'm Helen Sayer. Pleasant viewing. Good night.